Welcome! In this tutorial, we will implement the Game Over functionality. We will define a die method inside the player script and we will stop the game once that method is called. Let's get started. Okay, let's handle the player death functionality. But first, do you remember the method that we tried to call from the obstacle scene? The die method that we said we were going to define it later? Let's take a quick look at that before we get into the player script. And you might have noticed that I'm using this quick open scene window to navigate between scenes. The way you get the way you open this is by holding down control and shift, it's command on a Mac, and pressing O. Then you get this window and from here you you can see all the scenes in your game. And if you have a ton of scenes and you don't want to look through all of them, you can just type it out here. I'm just going to type obstacle and press enter. And here I am. Okay, cool. So inside the script here, when a body enters any of the two walls, we're checking if the body is the player and if the body has a method called die. And if it, it does, we call it. So now, we will define this method because up until now, because we didn't have this method, this condition, the second one wasn't met. The first one was because we are, we were in fact colliding with the player, but the player never had a die method. So this was never true, but now we will define the die methods. So this condition will be called. Let's go to the player scene. And in here, let's create a new method called die. And in here, we want to do a couple of things. First, let's create a signal that we will call died. And let's emit this inside the die method. Okay, the second thing we of course want to stop animating. We don't want to keep flapping when we die. So let's get the animator and call stop. We also don't want the bird to be able to flap anymore. So let's create a variable that we will call alive and let's set it to true by default. And let's check once the player presses the flap action, let's check if are we also alive? And if we're not, we're not gonna call flap. And inside here, we'll set alive to false. And at the start of this method, we'll check if, if we're not alive, let's return because there's no point calling a die method if we're not alive to begin with. We can also add a little print statement here to test if our die method is working or not. But before testing, right now, the only thing that's calling the player's die method is the walls, the pipes, as we call them. But we also want the ground to call this method when the player collides with it. So let's go to the ground scene. And in here, we want to be able to check if the player enters this body or not. And to do that, let's add an area 2D, which we will call death zone. This is gonna have a collision shape 2D. And for this collision shape, I'm gonna use the same shape, the same shape resource from the collision shape of ground. I'm gonna right click, copy, get back to death zone shape, collision shape and paste. Let's quickly position this. Okay, but be careful because once you copy a resource, that resource is being shared among the two collision shapes. So if you resize one, the other will also get affected. If you don't want that, you can right click and click on make unique on either of them to make them independent of each other. I'm not gonna do that because they're gonna be the same size anyway, so there's no point. But just to demonstrate, 
I, you can see that once I start resizing one, the other is also being resized. Okay, great. Now we need to hook the body entered signal of the death zone to a script. And inside there, we will call the die method of the player. But the problem is we don't have a script on ground that we can use. And we could add a script to ground or we could also add a script to the death zone, which is also a good idea. But I'm just going to go back to the world scene. And in here, I'm going to turn on editable children on the ground. And I'm going to hook the body entered uh, signal to the world script. Great. And in here, we'll do the same checks that we did inside the obstacle. If body is player and if body dot has method die, we'll call body dot die. Great. Now we're correctly calling die both from the ground and the, the obstacle. Let's run the game. And if I just fall, whoops. Okay, it's, I made a small typo there. You probably noticed it before me. Let's add a T there and let's run this again. If I just fall, I died. I can't, even if I click, I can't flap anymore. And our print statement also worked, which is good. So let's get back here. Let's delete. Let's also check one more time to see if the die method is also working with the pipes. Yep. Works great. So we set alive to false and that's why we couldn't flap anymore because we're doing a check before after we get input. Our animator also stopped and we emitted this signal here, which we will use later on. Let's get rid of the print statement here. And let's go back inside the world script. Here, after the player dies, we want the game to stop. To do that, let's connect the died signal that we're emitting from the player to the world script. And in here, we wanna, well, we wanna first, we're gonna do a couple of things here, but first let's actually create a method called game over just for simplicity sake and just so that it's easier to read. Let's create a game over method and in here we'll first stop the obstacle spawner. Then we need the ground to stop as well. So we'll get the ground. Well, first let's get a reference to it. We'll say ground get node. We'll get its animation player. This is a nice way you can get a node inside a scene if that scene doesn't have a script and you can't create a reference. This is a way you can use. And we'll say stop. And finally, we want the obstacles, the obstacles that are currently on the screen to stop because by default, as you remember, our obstacles are moving towards left. But once we die, we, we don't want them to move anymore because we want to give the impression that the game stopped. And to do that, let's go inside the obstacle scene and let's add this scene to a group that we will call obstacles. And inside the world scene, We'll use the call group method of the scene tree to call a method on a group. And in this case, the group is obstacles. And the method we want to call is set physics process. And we want this to be false. This method will deactivate the physics process method of every scene that's inside the obstacles group. Let's take a quick look at the obstacles script. And here, as you can see, 
we're making it move inside the physics process. So once this method gets deactivated, the obstacle won't be moving anymore. Let's run the game and see if this is working. So if I just jump on the ground, everything should stop. Good, that's working. Let's also try with the, the obstacle. Okay, great. This is it for this tutorial. We implemented the game over functionality and in the next one, we will create a menu system that we will use to display a game over menu and a simple menu before the game starts. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.